It is rare to see officers testify against fellow officers. MSNBC's The Eleventh Hour discuss with Ashley Parker, Paul Butler, and Marilyn Mosby if this is a turning point. People may not realize exactly how rare this verdict is, how rare it was to see and hear fellow officers, superior officers testifying forcefully against a fellow officer. Let me play a reminder of that before you and I get on with our discussion that in no way, shape, or form is anything that um, uh, is by policy, is not part of our training, and it is certainly not part of our ethics or our values. The defendant violated our policy in terms of rendering aid. Pulling him down to the ground face down and putting your knee on a neck for that amount of, uh, that amount of time is just uh, uncalled for. When Mr. Floyd was no longer offering up any resistance to the officers that could have ended their restraint. So, Counselor, you didn't have that in the Freddie Gray case uh, to name the case you were involved with. You had uh, a wall of blue. You didn't have the gruesome video of life draining from a human being, though we know what happened inside that police van does this to you. For all these factors we've listed, mark any kind of a turning point. It absolutely marks a turning point. And, you know, watching the Chauvin trial, the stakes couldn't have been higher, not just for that family who deserved some semblance of justice for the tragic murder of their loved one captured on film, but also the stakes were, couldn't be higher for us as a country, right? As the world watched America's justice system and whether it was going to live up to the ideals of our promise of ensuring one standard of justice. I think that Keith Ellison and the prosecution team did an outstanding job improving every element of these offenses charged. But thanks, it was thanks to that video, let's be very clear, that visually depicted George Floyd being callously murdered on camera that could not be contradicted. And while I understood the prosecutor's argument to the jury, I wholeheartedly disagreed that what Derek Chauvin did not did was not policing in America. What Derek Chauvin did to George Floyd is absolutely policing in America for black people in this country. The infliction of excessive force, the violation of de-escalation policies, the refusal to render aid, the complete and utter indifference to the lives of black people is exactly what policing has been and continues to be in America for black people in this country. And so yes, Derek Chauvin was on trial, but so was policing in America. And the reason this moment is so important is because there's finally an acknowledgement of what it's been like for black people in this country. There's finally a recognition that our lives matter too. Paul, I don't know what my first thoughts were when I got the call today that after 10 uh, plus hours of deliberations, there was a verdict. I'm curious as to what your initial reaction was. Were you surprised that that short of deliberation ended up nicking him on all three? I was surprised. The conventional wisdom among lawyers is that a quick verdict is a good sign for the defense. But in this case, with overwhelming evidence, I couldn't imagine that that was actually true. And so when I heard the verdict, Brian, I didn't react as a former prosecutor or law professor or legal analyst. I reacted as a black man. And so I cried. This doesn't make up for Emmett Till or Breonna Taylor, but it does mean that in our criminal legal system, one black man's life mattered. When he was killed by a police officer, and in the United States of America, that counts as progress. 
Ashley Parker, all we need to do is listen to these two lawyers who preceded you to try to begin to understand the emotion that went into today and the emotion so many people are feeling tonight. Let's talk about the president you cover and what a change it must be for you to learn Joe Biden's comments about the case this morning, which would have been an issue had they not been sequestered. Joe Biden choosing to call the family and the lawyers and speak candidly the way people speak and then his choice with the vice president by his side also in a speaking role to address the nation it is quite a bit of change when contrasted to the president who was in office for the death of george floyd and the ignition of protests in the streets across our country it, it's absolutely a change from former President Trump. And it's one of the things that President Biden promised even as a candidate, even before George Floyd's death. You know, we have to remember that Joe Biden got into this race, he said, in part because of Charlottesville, the white supremacist violence at Charlottesville. And he cast this election in terms of a battle for the soul of the nation. And so what you saw is, is a president who does feel this deeply and earnestly and viscerally and even those comments he made earlier into the day that were uh, despite the jury being sequestered controversial um that's uh, that's what makes the people who do love joe biden love him so much it was sort of someone blurting out their their true feelings which were the true feelings of a lot of people in this country and again joe biden he's a 78 year old white guy but he is someone who's lived experience is that of pain and loss and and you saw that night how he can step into that empathizer in chief role and that pastoral role although it is important to add that as he himself said that's not really enough but it was people felt like what the moment called for this evening and today